Go to the steam market and buy the cursed cauldron. Find a triangle foundation. Place two sheet metal walls with their soft side facing towards you. Rotate the cauldron until you see three stones being really close together. Place it as far into the corner as you can. Rotate the wall on the right. Verify that you can access the cauldron from the other side of both walls. And voila, you have a way of transferring loot through two solid walls at once. Let's make good use of that. Place a square and surround it with walls. Fill it with a sleeping bag and boxes for your most valuable items. Honeycomb it on all sides. As well as on top. You're now the proud owner of probably the most efficient accessible 30 rocket bunker. But we don't stop here. Adding a few more foundations and we have a footprint that is perfect for a small group base. Meet the Exasperator. It's a very affordable main base around this double walled suicide bunker. It comes in two flavors. A minimal version that is ruthlessly optimized towards efficiency and an extended version that provides more active and passive defenses. Both versions feature a cursed cauldron enabled double walled suicide bunker at its core, an open living and crafting space, four perfectly separated frustrator style drop down loot rooms and a Spider-Man third floor entrance. The external version further features external auto turret pods, a shooting floor and two minicopter hangars. The minimal version costs 12k stone, 14k metal frags and 138 high qual, resulting into an upkeep of 2.3k stone, 3.2k frags and 34 high qual per day. Rating the TC takes a minimum of 31 rockets and the most ideal rate I could find to rate the TC and all main loot rooms was 55 rockets. The extended version costs significantly more high qual and stone and has an upkeep of 4.5k stone, 4.2k frags and 118 high qual per day. The cost of rating the TC is 38 rockets and the cheapest full rate 62 rockets if raiders correctly guess which are the three loot rooms. That makes it one of the most durable bases on my channel. We will tour the extended version. Usually we start our base tours at the airlock, but this base has none. The only visible doors are on the third floor. But no worries, we just jump against the wall and Spider-Man our way up to the door. This is an exploit that was first shown to me by Tommy, who you might remember from the Farmageddon trap base. It uses a ladder on the other side of the metal wall. On the right side of the door, we enter the minicopter hangar. Outside of the garage door, we find a landing pad surrounded by barricades. If we head through the corridor, we find the same layout mirrored on the other side. This door leads towards the shooting floor. The gaps allow to spot people who are hugging the base. This garage door leads into the core of the base. Down here we find the main living space. Notice how those undrainable traps guard the entrance. Behind those windows we find the garage door protected auto turrets. Those garage doors can be opened and closed through the wall. On each of the four sides of the living space we have entrances to the loot rooms. As usual, these are protected by undrainable shotgun traps to slow down raiders. This chute is an exception as it leads to a bedroom. On the wall we find the switches to turn the auto turrets on and off. If you close the door we see the cursed cauldron sticking through the wall, which connects the bunker and the main base. Spawning inside of the bunker we see the same cauldron again right next to the sleeping bag. Otherwise we find the TC and four large boxes for your most valuable loot here. The most efficient way to transfer loot is to have a teammate on the other side of the cauldron while you are inside of the bunker. Let's jump into the build. The footprint is built around a square foundation which will house the bunker. 
On each side add two triangles. Fill the gaps with a square. Add two more triangles to each of the squares. We'll use the center square for the starter unit. Build a one by one with a triangle airlock. The doorways will have to be destroyed later, so keep them wood. Use the one by one for the TC, a few small boxes and sleeping bags. The next one by one is going to be the utility room. Have the double door open inwards to create another airlock. Once the furnaces have smelted enough metal fragments, replace the wooden double door with a sheet metal one. Bit by bit, upgrade all foundations apart from the outer triangles. Wrap walls around the outer perimeter until you reach the starter unit's airlock again. Here, consider placing another temporary door frame out of wood. Close off the ceiling apart from these triangles. On each of them build a roof exit. Very important, for every second one of them, leave the ceiling of the roof exit off. You now have plenty of space on the inside, which you can use for more boxes, furnaces and all the other items you need. If you place a furnace below one of the roof exits, you can already use them to get onto the roof. Optionally, place double doors on the end of the squares in order to increase the cost of a door rate for this configuration. Be warned, however, these will ultimately become the entrances to the loot rooms. If you prefer window frames for your loot rooms, leave those doors out as I did in this video. From the outside, the base should look like this at this point. Once you obtained ladders, you can build the final way of getting into the base. Upgrade the two walls outside of the innermost double door to sheet metal. Take a ladder and place it up as high as you can. It should clip into the bars of the sheet metal wall. Thanks to this ladder, you're now able to spider climb the metal wall from the outside. In case you cannot reach the ladder, place a wooden square foundation in front of the wall. You now can destroy the temporary ground floor exit and replace it with a solid wall. At this point in time, it makes sense to turn the core one by one into the suicide bunker. Note that you can delay this step if you don't have enough material saved. Clear out the core one by one. Destroy the two wooden door frames and the TC. For the door frames you can use three machetes. For the TC, an Ioka pistol with 23 handmade shells will do. Place a temporary twig wall and place the TC against it in this orientation. Next to it, place the sleeping bag of the person that will be able to spawn inside of the core suicide bunker, which should be the person who is available the most. At this point, if possible, upgrade the core to its final tier, since later it can be challenging to reach all the building blocks. Place salvage shelves and four large boxes. Now comes the hardest, yet most crucial part of the build. We're going to place the cursed cauldron that allows to pass loot through two walls at the same time. Upgrade the triangle foundation outside of the opening to armored now, as later you won't be able to reach it without trouble. Place a sleeping bag against the wall, and give it to the person that is the second most available. From within this triangle, place two sheet metal walls with a soft side facing towards you. Take the cursed cauldron and rotate it with the R key until it matches the following shape. You should see three stones clustered very closely together. Make sure that the cauldron is as close to the left wall and as far into the corner as possible before you place it. Then rotate the right sheet metal wall. Have two teammates verify that you can access the cauldron from both sides. If that's the case, upgrade the inner wall to armored and again have your teammate inside of the bunker verify that the cauldron is still accessible. If that's not the case, demolish the walls and start over. Remember that you cannot demolish walls anymore once 10 minutes have passed. Since you walled yourself effectively in, pass out the loot via the cauldron. Since the cauldron is vital for efficient bunker access, let's cover it. 
You could, for example, use an item such as a locker or a furnace. In case you go offline, you can also just leave the double door open. It not only covers the cauldron, but it also does not provide an incentive for raiders to use explosives here. You may be concerned about what happens if the cauldron gets destroyed during a raid. No worries, we're going to prepare a fallback strategy that relies on the use of chains of drop boxes. Please note that at this point, all four shoots should have ladders, as we will build walls that separate them. Head to the triangle opposite of the cauldron. Upgrade its foundation to armored. Place another sleeping bag for the second most available team member and close it off. And while we're at it, close off the other two triangles next to the core in the same fashion. We won't need sleeping bags though. The dropbox chains will look like this. Spawn inside of the core and remove this large box. Jump onto the shelves and place an outgoing dropbox against the wall. Then turn around and place an incoming dropbox above the sleeping bag. Outside of the core, where the cauldron used to be, place an outgoing dropbox. In the loot room on the opposite side, place an incoming dropbox. It can be quite annoying to use this fallback with fewer than three people, but it beats giving up the base. I'll leave the drop boxes for now as orientation. In reality, I would probably destroy them now because they would give raiders intel that we'd rather deny them. With the core secured, let's turn our attention to the second floor, the future living space. In the center, build honeycomb on top of the TC bunker. Before you close off the walls, you need to have obtained garage doors. Use the first two on the chutes where the ceiling is open so that you'll be able to get onto the roof. Once the walls are placed, this will be our only way in and out of the base. On top of the two open chutes, build roof exits so that door campers cannot simply jump in. Then let's complete the walls. If you plan on having auto turrets, place windows next to the doors of the chute entrances. Otherwise just surround everything with walls. Close off the ceiling. On the roof, you should at least already build a simple airlock to prevent door campers from going deep easily. Place one single door on the left side of the double door. If you are going for the minimal version of the build, close off the sides with two windows. If you are going for the extended version, use double doors. The second floor can now house all your items. Use it for workbenches, furnaces, repair bench and research table, and even beds and lockers if you desire. To make door raiding more tedious, place two shotgun traps guarding the roof exit. One should go on the ceiling here, the other one can go into the chute as far back as possible. You should still be able to get in and out of the chute easily. At this point you might be running out of storage space. Therefore, let's turn towards the final design of the loot rooms. Jump down to one of the loot rooms and clear out the space. Upgrade all building blocks, including the chute, to sheet metal. Replace the ladder so that it sticks into the metal wall. If you intend to build the extended version, already upgrade the wall on the left to armored. Later you might not be able to reach it anymore. You have several options of designing those loot rooms. I'll show you two of them. This one offers more protection against offline raids, but is less convenient. Place two large and three small boxes. Attach two shotgun traps to the side of the wall, pointing a bit upwards. Place a twig window frame and verify that you can reach all items. Destroy the window frame and place a floor tile at half height. Attach two shotgun traps to the sides again. 
This time have them quite far forward and point downwards. Two large boxes should fit right behind them. And a third shotgun trap attached to the ceiling goes between them. Note that to force raiders to face off those traps, it can make sense to upgrade the floor tiles above the loot rooms to armored. If you go for the extended version, consider to already invest that 52 high qual. In this setup, the traps hold up quite well against splash damage, and the glass window is stronger than for example a garage door. The disadvantage is that it's very hard to repair any damage. The other option is to use garage doors. They are weaker, but your team is more likely to keep them closed, which matters if you get surprised by an online raid. For the two loot rooms designated for the fallback drop boxes, I would strongly recommend to use garage doors or armored doors, as it is much easier to place and replace the drop boxes in this design. As before, first upgrade the room and replace the ladder. Place two large and four small boxes on the ground. The first two shotgun traps go as far back as possible. This way, they're best protected from splash damage. The top part can be the same as in the other design. In the ideal case, use armored double doors to close off those loot rooms. However, garage doors work as well. The loot room next to the cauldron is a special case. The design of this room has two main requirements. You want to prevent raiders from using splash damage, and you want to hide the cauldron as best as you can. The best option is to turn it into a bedroom, use an armored door, and leave it open. This way the door conceals and covers the cauldron bit sticking through the wall. A sheet metal double door works as well if you don't yet have the armored double door blueprint. You can also place a locker in front of the cauldron. Make sure that the locker does not have a code lock though, you don't want to force raiders to destroy it. At the same time, if it is empty, you can pick it up with a hammer. This setup combines nicely with one bed or three sleeping bags. In this case, you can secure the room properly with a garage door. During the build of the loot rooms, you have already upgraded many of the walls. Next, we're going to complete those upgrades. Start by making sure that all doors on the second floor are garage doors. Add four more garage doors separating the loot room squares from the core. Then, start upgrading to sheet metal. The floor and the honeycomb above the suicide bunker. All ceiling tiles. And finally the walls. To increase the cost to raid one of the loot rooms to 11 to 12 rockets, head outside and honeycomb them with stone. To complete the minimal version of the base, jump onto the roof. Place a sheet metal floor frame next to the door and a roof on top of it. The roof will protect you while you're climbing in and out. Place three doors with a window as shown. They serve as an airlock for entering the base as well as the roof. Go to the chute and replace the double doors with garage doors. Then upgrade all building blocks to sheet metal. Optionally, place another ladder inside of the chute. This enables you to climb up all the way from the bottom to the top of the roof. 
but beware, your enemies can use this as well. Once you mirror those steps for the other roof exit, the minimal version of the exasperator is complete. Since my video on estimating base costs and scrap, I'm routinely computing the efficiencies of my build. This minimal design is incredibly efficient for its durability. With a minimum rate cost of 31 rockets to TC, it provides the equivalent of 26 scrap per rocket to TC protection, which is at par with the Valkyrie while being more spacious and better protected. Calculating with another 24 rockets to reach all three main loot rooms as well, the efficiency is an incredible 14 scrap per rocket, which is usually only reached by bases half its size, such as the Mini Frustrator. However, if protection, functionality and convenience is more important to you than efficiency, stay tuned for the extended version. You should have used windows instead of walls on the second floor above the loot rooms, and use double doors instead of windows outside of the roof exits. First, we're going to be using a lot more high qual upgrades. Make sure that the two walls on the left side of the main loot rooms are armored. Upgrade all floor tiles on the second floor to armored. as well as the bunker honeycomb in the center of the base. The bunker is now secured by two layers of armored walls on all sides. On the upper floor, outside of the two double doors, place two triangles each. Surround them with windows. Place a single door frame here with a door that stays open. Close off the ceiling. Repeat those steps on the other side. We needed those windows on the second floor for the auto turret pots, so that we can fill the auto turrets from inside of the base. In front of each of the window, place two garage doors and a ceiling. Then upgrade the floor tile and place the auto turret onto it. Close the garage doors for now, as we'll deal with the electricity at a later stage. Use the remaining space on the roof for minicopter hangars. Place two triangles like this, and then create a landing platform above the turret pot. Place a window to the right and a garage door at the front. One thing I love to do is to mark minicopter landing pads with Christmas lights like that. In case you return during the night, you can still land somewhat safely by targeting the center of that cross. To protect against fire from the ground, we'll use concrete barricades, which have fallen a bit out of fashion. The first one needs to cross that gap. The second one goes to the left, then two of each side of the landing pad. If you're worried that people might use your ladders to camp the minicopter exit, you can use a shotgun trap to guard the invisible ladder like this. Further, there's no harm in adding another shotgun trap to the side of the minicopter hangar. Mirror this build on the other side of the base. In the central square, I would place two garage doors and upgrade the floor tile above to sheet metal. People love to drill into bases from the top. Let's make it a little bit more costly for them. You can even use the space for sleeping bags and lockers, beds or drop-off chests. The final bit left is to add electricity. As power source, you could for example build a tower like this for a windmill. Add those twig floor tiles temporarily to be able to place the windmill onto the single square. Destroy them afterwards. Another solution is to spread a series of solar panels across the roof. If you spread them out, for example in groups of two, it's much more costly for raiders to deprive you from the electricity required to run all the vital systems. Decide for a spot for all the electrical components. The wall of the core should do. Combine all sources of electricity via root combiners. Find a spot for the large battery, two branches, one blocker and an ore switch. Run the combined electricity output into the first branch. Set the branch out to 49 and route it into the ore switch. Connect the power out with the next branch. Set the next branch out to 2 and connect it to the blocker. Connect the output to the large battery. 
Connect the large battery's output with the blocker and the blocker with the ore switch. As long as the windmills and solar panels deliver sufficient power, the excess energy will charge the large battery. If they provide less than 49 power, the large battery will take over and feed the circuit. This way, you should have power day and night. Finally, we need to route the power to the auto turrets. I would recommend to place the switches to turn them on and off into the bedroom. This is where you're most likely to spawn in during a raid. Place four switches and four electrical branches. Connect the ore switch to the first branch. Then chain those branches by connecting their outputs to the inputs of the next one. For each of them, set the branch value to 11 and connect them to the switch below. Then, run each of the switches to one auto turret. Feel free to add a wooden sign, reminding you of the direction of each of the auto turret. And that's the exasperator done! Shout out again to the people on my Discord and Kaiwala23 in particular for the inspiration. I hope the base inspires you to build your own double bunker bases. It's a bit unfortunate that it requires an item that has to be purchased, but I just had to design a base around this super efficient bunker. May the base bring you safely through the wipe. Until then, Evil Wurst, out.